Trackmania is a popular series of PC racing games, the most recent of which was released in 2020. Because it is an arcade racer rather than a sim, it is not designed to have realistic physics. Over the years, enterprising players have discovered a number of tricks buried within the physics logic that can be used to gain extra speed and improve finish times. One popular trick is known as speed drifting. This is a method of sliding the car in a particular way that, owing to the mysterious way in which the trackmania physics works, results in an increase in speed beyond that which you can achieve without sliding. To do a speed drift, the car is first put into a slide. Once in the slide, the angle of the slide is carefully controlled by adjusting the steering input. With just the right angle, the car will accelerate more than if the car were not skidding. This angle, which I'll refer to as the slip angle, is the angle between the car's direction and the car's velocity. The slip angle is typically described in terms of the overlap between the skid marks of the front and rear tyres, since this is a convenient visual reference which corresponds with the slip angle. When watching tutorials for learning to speed drift, you might read that an overlap of about 50% is a good starting point for road. More advanced tutorials will also point out that the optimal overlap increases as the speed increases. In this video, I investigate the exact relationship between speed, slip angle and acceleration across four of the game's track surfaces – road, dirt, grass and plastic. Since the source code for Trackmania is not available, I took empirical measurements from the game. More specifically, I wrote a plugin that records the car's velocity vector and rotation about the vertical axis, known as yaw, into a file, from which I can derive the slip angle and tyre overlap. Data is collected for each physics frame that the car is sliding, while speed drifting at a variety of speeds and slip angles on some simple maps. For simplicity, I am restricting my investigation to flat maps. With the data now recorded, the angle of the car's velocity can be calculated using the arctan2 function and then the slip angle can be obtained by subtracting this angle from the car's yaw, being careful to keep the angle in the correct range. Speed can be computed as the magnitude of the velocity vector and acceleration is the difference in speed from one step to the next, divided by the physics frame time. To illustrate this data, here is the acceleration plotted against the tyre overlap on the road surface over a range of speeds. There are similar plots for the other three surfaces. I plug this data into a simple three-layer neural network which learns to predict the acceleration from slip angle and speed. I train a separate model for each of the four surfaces under consideration. As a baseline, I will compare the acceleration when sliding to that when not sliding. Here is a plot of acceleration against speed for a run with no sliding on road. If we ignore gear changes where the acceleration drops to zero, the acceleration is very closely approximated as a step function of speed. The profile for plastic is identical to road, and grass and dirt are similar except for a uniform 10% reduction in acceleration. Here are the learned models for each of the four surfaces. The orange line gives the model's prediction and the white line is the acceleration with no sliding. Road is not shown since it is tricky to hold a consistent slide at these low speeds. We can slide on the other three surfaces, but they are still slower than not sliding. Once we get above 200 km an hour, the baseline speed drops down and speed sliding becomes beneficial on the non-road surfaces. At this speed, the optimal angle corresponds with around 75-85% to overlap for all three surfaces, with the optimal overlap increasing as the speed increases. As we cross 400 km an hour, the baseline speed drops again. However, the peak acceleration on grass, dirt and plastic remains the same, so the gains from speed sliding become even greater. Also at this speed, it becomes possible to maintain a consistent speed slide on road. At 420, a very precise speed slide at 50% overlap can give marginally better acceleration. As the speed increases, the window for improved acceleration gets wider on road. For all surfaces, the optimal overlap increases, as does the maximum acceleration. 800 km an hour is a hard limit for grass, beyond which apparently no further acceleration is possible. It is interesting to note that from 200 km an hour up until this point, the optimal acceleration on grass is actually higher than that of road, which in the real world would provide better traction. For the remaining three surfaces, the baseline acceleration drops to almost zero, and the range for speed sliding beating normal driving becomes massive, particularly on dirt and plastic. 
This continues until 900 km an hour where dirt reaches its top speed, and until 1000 km an hour where plastic and road reach their top speed. While it is interesting to reveal the optimal angles for speed sliding, it is still a difficult balancing act to perform, particularly when the only feedback you have is from looking at a few pixels in your tyre tracks. To this end, I have written a prototype plugin that interactively displays the acceleration overlap curve along with the current overlap and acceleration. To do an optimal speed slide you should keep the cross at the peak of the curve. I am hesitant to release this tool however, since I feel that it gives an unfair advantage. Let me know in the comments what you think. In this video, I have explored speed increases during speed slides on flat surfaces. Clearly when going downhill you would expect to have greater acceleration, but would the optimal slide angle otherwise change? What about on a banked curve? I don't know the answer to these questions, but the techniques used here could, at least in theory, be adapted to include surface angle as one of the features. Finally, a note that while maximising speed is an important factor, it is by no means the only consideration when playing the game. For example, when driving on road, you can often achieve a lower turning radius when not speed drifting. So if your corner is sufficiently tight, then speed drifting, no matter how well you do it, is still going to be slower. However, for wide corners followed by long straights, exit speed will be the dominant factor. I hope this video has helped shine a light on speed sliding in Trackmania. If you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below.